Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this is our call to worship. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes from John chapter 14. Begin the first verse. your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, unto, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearers of his holy word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before your presence to give you all the praise. We magnify your holy name, for you truly are the majesty on high. There is none like you above the heavens nor under the earth. You are God and God alone. And you are worthy of our praise. Father God, we come before your presence, O oh God, asking for your forgiveness. Asking that you would forgive us, O oh God, for the sins that we have committed before you. Sins that we've committed by thought, word, or deed, oh God. Our prayer, oh God, is that you would forgive us and try us again. Oh, how we love you, oh God. When you first loved us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for how you continue, Lord. To show us the way. You continue to have mercy upon us. Lord, you continue, Lord, to make a way out of no way. Lord, we just praise you for all that you are, for all that you do. But Lord, our prayer is, even though we messed up, Lord, that you would forgive us, oh God, and help us, Lord, to truly become the people that you are calling us to be. Clean us up, oh God. Creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit in us. That we may be people of light, oh God. People of love, people of compassion, people of mercy people of grace, yes, Lord. servants of the Most yes, High God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No. Without your help, oh God, we would surely fail. Yes. So we're calling on you now, Father God. Yes, Lord. Help us, oh God. Yes. Deliver us from ourselves. Yes. Grow us. Strengthen our faith. Build us up together. Unite our hearts, oh God. Yes, yes. That we may be one in faith, oh God. Yes. One in our walk, one in our belief. That we may truly be the church that you're one day coming back for. Yes. <clears throat> so we thank you, oh God. Thank you. We thank you for how you delivered us from suffering. How you deliver us in suffering. How you deliver us while suffering. How your peace rests on us, oh God, when we're going through the midnight hour. So Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, all we want to do right now, oh God, is to say thank you.
you. To lift up your name in praise, Lord. To make this moment about you and you alone. For you've been there for us from the beginning of time. And Lord, we long to see your face one day. But until that day, Lord, help us to serve you well. Lord, I pray, Lord, is as you bless the further portion of this service, that you will bless the man of God as he stands to proclaim your word of truth. Use him in a mighty way, O oh God. But Lord, let this moment, Lord, keep our hearts and our minds trained on you, Lord. The heart that finisher of our faith, Lord. Oh, how we worship you. And once again, Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless this world, Lord, that is, is, is going through, Father God. Whether it be the virus that has spread or, or, or various uh, uh, things that have come upon us, Lord. Lord, we know you have the answer, the cure for all that ails us, Lord. So we're just lifting it up to you, Father God. We're giving it all to you right now, Lord. We're leaving it right here at the altar, Father God. Amen. And we're just going to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're going to claim victory now yeah. in the name of Jesus. And we're going to give you all the praise. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Father God, for every answered prayer. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for every family that is represented here on, on this morning. Lord, just thank you for, for, for your love, oh God. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray and we say thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to lift his name. The Lord is Amen. high, right? Amen. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. High and lifted up is he. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask Minister Reed to come and lead us in praise. Amen. Amen. Lift every voice. Every voice.
And that song does something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That song does something to me because I can look back over my life and see what he's brought me from. And it's been amazing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I have always been striving to do what's right, but it's amazing how he still loves me. It's amazing. Some of us will cut each other off. You get me wrong? I'm done. <laughs>
that you would bless this offering, Lord, that it be used in tenure, which is given for the maintaining of your church. Yeah. Uh, lift up your church, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. Once again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Certainly, we've had a wonderful time. Yeah. Worship thank you, Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Ears, yeah. Yeah. draw yeah. in your wondering thoughts yeah. that we may we will make ready to receive the word of the Lord this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, my prayer is that you continue to pray for our pastor as he yeah. prepares to come before us. Yeah. Without further ado, the next question you will hear is that of Pastor Lord. Over the years, many 
names have been given to the various days. On Thursday, we celebrate what is called Monday Thursday. And that word Monday is derived from a Latin word, mandatum, meaning commandment. The primary commandment of Jesus' message is found in the story that's told when Jesus humbles himself to wash the feet of the disciples prior to the traditional Passover meal. You can see that in John chapter 13 when Jesus washed their feet and then he gave them a new commandment. That is um, <clears throat> what's traditionally celebrated on Monday, Thursday. And then, uh, you know, we call it Good Friday, but uh, the terrible Friday uh, that it was Break is it called Good Friday Break it down. because Good of the resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus yeah. and his victory yes, sir. over sin. Yes, sir. And so we can have uh, uh, the reason to celebrate, mm -hmm. the reason Eric Reed <laughs> celebrates the way he celebrates yeah. is because he understands yeah. what yeah. Jesus did yeah. Yeah. for us yeah. on the cross. Yeah. 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 And if you are rightly understanding what took place on the cross, you know you have the same reason yeah. Yeah. to celebrate yeah. because of what Jesus did. Yeah. And all that he did is tied up in the cross. Yeah. <laughs> so this morning for just a few minutes, I want to talk about in the cross. And, and, and particularly, I want to talk about what we have in the cross. Mm -hmm. Let me hang my remarks on this verse of scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and this morning, just one verse will claim our attention. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Are you located? Please stand to honor the reading of God's word. Listen, God's word is so important and so significant to us who believe that we must always Stand in honor of his word. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, from the New King James. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. This is the word of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for another opportunity to share your word. We pray, O oh God, that you would touch our hearts and our minds. We pray that your word would affect us as you designed for it to do. I ask, O oh God, that you would think with my mind, speak with my voice, stand in my body. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless the hearers to hear exactly what you want them to know. Yeah. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you would speak. And when your voice is heard, make us glad and ready to do your every word. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. May be seated. From that passage of Scripture, I want to talk about in the cross. Yes. Uh, as, as Christians, we believe that Jesus is the incarnation of God on earth. 
we believe that God chose to reveal himself as a man uh, to spread the gospel, to teach people how to live good lives and learn how to follow his word. God sent Jesus to offer mankind a chance of salvation by giving his life for us. Amen. In our text this morning, the present participles declare two contrasting uh, groups of hearers. Those who are perishing and those who are being saved. Mm -hmm. They indicate that Paul sees the judging and saving activity of God as underway in the present moment. Mm -hmm. In other words, he understood that when he wrote those words that God was actively judging and damning those people who, who were listening. And it's the same today. God is still watching us. Yeah. He knows what our thoughts are and what yeah. our hearts yeah. are, are harboring. Yeah. He knows who we are. Yeah. <laughs> and he's judging us, yeah. not by what some here say, right. but he's judging us by what we do. Yeah. Yeah. You can't hide from God. Amen. That was Amen. true when Paul write, wrote these words, and it's true now. Mm -hmm. Paul describes the church not as those who have been saved, but as those who are being saved. Mm -hmm. The distinction is important because he will continue to insist throughout his letter not on the not yet completed character of salvation in Christ. Amen. Come on here, come, come, come on a little bit closer, let me tell you. Sometimes people think that they already got there. They already arrived. So they have the right to judge other people. They have the right to set the standards of behavior for all people. Part of the trouble with those who claim wisdom is that they suppose themselves to have already arrived. Mm -hmm. They believe that they are in full possession of the truth. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, what Paul is telling us, however, is that the power of God is presently afoot in the world, bringing both destruction and deliverance. Mm -hmm. So when you think you've got it all together, mm -hmm. when you think you're at a position where you can condemn other people, yeah. you got it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And you're in some deep trouble. Yeah. The Gospel of John says, the word of God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That means Jesus is God and walked among us and is still among us today. God called his children to be faithful as he is faithful and has set them apart to have fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, and with his other children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Come don't, on. Don't, 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 don't miss it because you can't love him and yeah. not love his children. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Listen, he designed it so that we can love one another in order to make one another better. Yeah. Yeah. Come, on. Yeah. Uh, Come on now. You cannot enjoy fellowship with Christ mm -hmm. while being at odds with other members of the body of Christ. Right, right, right. Listen, 
Pastor, please hear this message. Yes, right. You can't be a part of the body and be mad at the other believers in the body. All right. Because the same grace that God poured out on you, he's pouring out on them. And you don't know where they are in their journey. He, 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 he's bringing us all along based upon who we are and where we are. You can't judge somebody else because you haven't arrived yet. Right. As long as you're still breathing under the sun that God made, you are still in process. You're still being made into the image of Jesus Christ. And you won't arrive at your destination while your feet are still walking around on this earth. This is, this is the message that's available to everyone in the cross. In the cross of Jesus, uh, we understand what it takes to live our lives. And not only what it takes, but what Jesus has done for us. Yeah. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's easy for us to forget yeah. that we ain't all that. Yeah. Right. None of us, none of us set the standard for living the Christian life. I don't care how long you've been on the road. I don't care how far you traveled on the road. As long as you're on this side of the Chile, Chile Jordan, you are still in process. I told you before, every believer ought to have stamped on their forehead under construction. God is still working on all of us. So, 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 it's the, it's this message that I want to share this morning. It's what's available to us in the cross. Yeah. In the cross of Jesus Christ, that's what I want to look at this morning. The cross is special because it separates the saints from the ants. The cross presents a paradox. It divides and it unites. It divides believers and unbelievers. And it unites the children of God. That's why we can all call him our father. Amen. 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 In our scripture this morning, Paul says the cry, that the cross is the greatest expression of wisdom and power the world has ever known. It had the cross has power to give eternal life. Amen. But to some people, it's foolishness. Mm -hmm. uh, those people would be unbelievers mm -hmm. because they have been blinded by the ways of sin and it causes them to reject the gospel and live in pride. Mm -hmm. and, and look, look. Don't look too far away from where you sit. <laughs> <laughs> to identify somebody who may be living in that exact condition. Yeah. Mm. Matter of fact, you might want to slide up to a mirror. <laughs> Take a peek at where you are. Amen. Paul says, these people are perishing. And 
uh, that they might they are being destroyed and will come to nothing. Mm. I'm judging other folks, mm. trying to set the standards, mm. trying to say what people should and shouldn't do, mm -hmm. and can't quote Genesis one and one. They laugh at and mock the only hope for salvation. They fail to continue with the family of God by loving their brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. These people attempt to set the standard for right and wrong. Mm -hmm. If you agree with them, right. then you're right. right. If you disagree with them, then you're wrong. Uh -huh. Fortunately, there is another group. Those who are being saved. All right. All right. It's, it's important sometimes when you look at the word of God to look at the wording. It, it, it does not say those who have been saved. It says those who are being saved. That's the part that tells us we're all in process. Yeah. We are becoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Come on. Listen, it, 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 it's, it's because it's because we know what the standard is, mm -hmm. and we want to be at that standard, and sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking mm -hmm. that we already arrived. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh -huh. I, I, I would tell you how to recognize them, but you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, man. In the cross, those who have, those who are being saved, recognize the very power of God, which can save them by its power. Uh -huh. This group, listen, this group, those who are being saved, is not perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. But they are continuing with God by faith. Amen. Please don't, 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 don't miss the pearls of wisdom that I'm dropping. <laughs> we ain't perfect, right, right, right. but we're trusting God by faith. Yeah. 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 Listen, listen, he knew we weren't going to be perfect. He knew what it takes to get us to where he wants us to be. Yeah. That's why we have trouble in our life. Right, yeah. right. He's trying to get our attention. Right. You think you got it all together? Mm -hmm. Here, hold on to this cancer. <laughs> See what you're going to do with yeah. that. Yeah. He, he, he's working something out in your life, yeah. even in the midst of your storm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. He is the God that you said is able yeah. to work all things yeah. together for the good of those who love him. Yeah. You just keep trusting him by faith. No matter what things are going on, trouble is going to arise. Yeah. And the enemy of our soul is always going to be on his job, whispering in our ear trying to divide us, trying to conquer us, trying to throw us off our game. The cross of Jesus Christ is much more than just an instrument of death. Yes, Jesus was crucified by Roman soldiers at the behest of religious zealots, the Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, who mistakenly yeah. didn't recognize yeah. that they were unfair, you see, <laughs> and they were sad, you see. <laughs> they thought they were right, but they were wrong. Yeah. Jesus laid down his life uh, to the satisfaction of God the Father. Mm -hmm. The cross is more than a physical event it transcends, it transcends time. The Bible identifies Christ 
as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's good news. That means God had a plan in mind for you even before you were born. Before Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God had a plan in the cross of Christ to redeem mankind and save us from the penalty of sin. Eternal separation from him. Let's look at four things that reveal what we have in the cross. You got time to wait on me? Although these four things are closely related, I want to highlight aspects of each one so that we can see what we truly have in the cross. Yeah. Okay. Right. In the cross, we are ransomed. In the cross, we are redeemed. And in the cross, we are restored. And in the cross, we are renewed. Those four things, and I'll take my seat. I, I, I try to hurry, but you know. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> Reverend White and Reverend Reed. <laughs> In the cross, we are ransomed. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, they came under the curse of sin. The power of the wicked one placed enmity between them and God, and they became enemies of God. And not only did they become enemies of God, but they, be, they passed that uh, enmity on to everyone who was born after them. And that created a sin debt. The sin debt had to be paid. And the only way for them, uh, everyone born after them, could be set free was for a ransom to be paid. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know what a ransom is. When they kidnap somebody and they say, we're going to let them go if you pay the ransom. In the Old Testament, the sacrificial system merely covered sin and had to be offered repeatedly. Oh, because God. we were slaves to sin and subject to death. Only the atoning death of a proper sacrifice could pay our penalty for sin. The sacrifice had to be perfect and without sin. Mark 10 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. I need some Bible reading to walk with. Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. The precious blood of Jesus was shed to pay our ransom. Jesus, therefore, because of Jesus, we are therefore redeemed in the cross. That's my next point. In the cross, we are redeemed. To be redeemed is to be delivered from the payment of a price, and the price had to satisfy every obligation of the dead. All of creation belongs to God because he created everything. All of nature when Adam and Eve sinned against God, all of nature was corrupted. That's right. It, 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 you know, you know, before Adam and Eve sinned and the curse fell on all mankind, it fell also on the earth. Yes. Before the curse, there was no roses that had thorns. Before the curse,
curse, lions could lay down with the lamb. Mm -hmm. But after the curse, the lion laid down with the lamb, but he was looking at some lamb chops. <laughs> the whole world, I'm trying to tell you, was corrupted because of sin. But the precious blood of Jesus was shed to pay our ransom. And Romans 10, 8, 21 indicates that even corruption will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. In the New Testament, redemption refers to salvation from sin, death, and the wrath of God. The New Testament emphasizes the tremendous cost of being redeemed. The, righteous, the righteousness and wrath of God had to be satisfied. The payment could only be made yeah, yeah. by a sinless yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, right, yeah. And Jesus lived his earthly life without sin so he could be that sacrifice for us. Yeah. Look, look, you, you, you remember, you remember, in Revelations chapter 5, uh, no one on the earth or under the earth or in heaven could be found to open the scroll. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it Come on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Read the Bible. yeah. It seems no one could pay the price of our sin debt. Mm -hmm. But there was one found worthy to open the seals and to serve as payment for our sins. The cost of our redemption is the precious blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. First Peter 1, 18 and 19. In the cross, in the cross, we are ransomed we are redeemed and we are restored. Thank you, Lord. That's my Thank third you. point. Amen. That's good news. In the cross, we are restored. The biblical idea of restoration is found in the book of Genesis. God created mankind in his own image, male and female, he made them. Mankind was to enjoy intimacy with each other and companionship with God. God designed man for woman, man and woman for marriage, and gave them instructions on how to live. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. However, they decided to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil of which God had forbidden them to eat, but they disobeyed God. And by doing so, they took life into their own hands. Instead of depending on God's wisdom, God's righteousness, and God's resources, they tried to live by their own limited resources according to their own opinion. You're helping us preach. You can see a whole bunch of people who try to live according to their own opinion. With this tragic decision, man lost the divine image as well as intimacy and companionship with God. But God's restorative work began immediately because mankind had become self-conscious trying to cover his nakedness by his own hands. God provided them clothes made of animal skins. Yeah, God read the Bible. Uh, yeah. All right. Made of animal skins. Uh -huh. This revealed with complete clarity 
God's redemptive and restorative plan for fallen mankind. Amen. The first sacrifice which provided mankind with clothes pointed toward the final sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus himself, who would renew their relationship with God. Y'all praying for me? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This, 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 uh, something catching up with it. I wish this was a basketball game. I'd call timeout. <laughs> <laughs> This first sacrifice, which provided mankind with clothes, pointed toward the final sacrifice of the Lamb of God himself, who would renew their relationship with God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, my, that's my next point, renewed. In the cross, we are renewed. God, by his grace, not only restores us, to a right relationship with him, he makes us new. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, the phrase to be in Christ means to be united by Christ, be united to Christ by faith, or to be in him as a branch is in the vine. Amen. That is to be so united with the vine or so in the vine as to derive all our nourishment and support from it and to be sustained by it. Amen. When we were in Christ, we should be getting all our spiritual nourishment from him. Yeah. Yeah. We should be so tied to him that everything we do points to the fact that we are in Christ. Yeah. We belong to him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If any man be in Christ, that is, all who become true Christians undergo such a change in their views and feelings as, and, and feelings as to make it proper to say of them that they are new creatures. Because they are obedient <coughs> to the word of God. It's an ongoing war, I tell you. No matter what they have been before, whether moral or immoral, whether infidels or speculative believers, whether amiable or debased, sensual or, or polluted, if they become Christians, they all experience such change as to make it uh, proper to say they are new transcend, trans, they are new creation. Amen. That means they have been transformed by the word of God. Amen. In the cross, we are not only made new, because of the cross, we can have joy. Yeah. When we are renewed, we can experience the joy of our salvation. Yeah. Knowing yeah. that we are walking in a way that's pleasing and honoring to God. Yeah. When you are renewed, you can experience the joy of your salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me call a witness to the stand. <laughs> Eric Reed, come here. Yeah. <laughs> and you start worshiping God, right. and you know why you're worshiping yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you fully aware of how far God has brought you. Amen. And you know that you could not have done it on your own. Amen. So you have the propensity yeah. to say thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 
Jesus yes. said this in John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Amen. Jesus wants our joy to be full. Yes. He does not want us to be mad at everybody we come across. That's right. That's right. And in John 16, 22, he said, your joy no one will take from you. When Jesus gives it to you, no one can take it away. In Romans 14, 17, Paul says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Finally, in John, James 1 and 2, James tells us to count it all joy yeah. Yeah. when you fall into yeah. various That's trials. Right. Joy is the hallmark of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Even when we're going through rough times, yeah. the Bible says we are to still be full of joy. Yeah. You can only have this joy if you truly know God is able right. to work all things That's together it. for That's those it. who love That's him it. and yeah. who obey yeah. his word. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Only, the only way to have this joy mm -hmm. is to have a right relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Yeah, He's right. the only way. Yeah. 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 If you want a relationship, you have to accept Christ as your Savior. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to cut across the field. <laughs> if you want that relationship, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can uh, pray this prayer. But now remember, praying a prayer, this prayer or any other prayer, will not save you. Mm -hmm. It's only in trusting in Christ by faith mm -hmm. that can save you. Uh -huh. yeah. This is the prayer this prayer is simply a way to express your faith in God and thank him for providing for your salvation. Amen. Amen. God, I know that you have, that I have sinned against you and deserve punishment. But Jesus Christ took the punishment that I deserve so that through faith in him, I could be forgiven. I place my trust in Jesus mm -hmm. for salvation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your wonderful grace and forgiveness, mm -hmm. the gift of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you're accepting Jesus Christ for the very first time, I want to urge you to find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church in your area. Mm -hmm. If you need assistance, uh, if you made that decision today and you need assistance, you may contact us on our website, our Facebook page, or call the church. Our website, www.secondbaptistindio.org. Our phone number is 760-347-3853. Uh -huh. You can, you can, contact us and we'll help you uh, with your next steps. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask every head to be bowed. Every head bowed. I want to extend an invitation in the sanctuary. If you believe God is calling you to be a part of the Second Baptist Church, I invite you to come to the altar just now. Listen, it, 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 you can be already saved, but you're uniting with the church. If you're here and you want to unite with the Second Baptist Church, if you just come uh, to the altar now.
what must be done to improve our health, to improve the situation by turning it over to you. Thank you, Lord, again for the word on today. May it be a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our pathway. May we hide this word in our heart that we may not sin against you. Thank you, Lord, for the word again. In Jesus' name, pray and thank you. today. You look so beautiful.